Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. I hope you're doing great today, having a good weekend. Uh, I'm doing pretty good, so uh, I'm looking forward to this one because we are gonna turn up one of the Happy Fun Cups. So I've been saving my extras, the leftovers from all the different pours that I do, uh, whether it be on the live stream or just you know making blanks uh, for, for my store. Uh, and so uh, we've <laughs> made quite a few of these things um, and I just pour it off. It's Alumalite clear. Uh, and I just, you know, dump it off. I don't pressurize these. So that's going to be one of the interesting things that I want to see. How does the surface look? Because technically you need to uh, pressurize Alumalite Clear slow. Um, the air bubbles just don't really get out. Now, in this case, I'm not that worried about these blanks. So I think it's going to be okay. But that's going to be one thing, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, check on and see how does this actually work. Now, the other issue with these things is you're just pouring layer on top of layer and it's not like um it's not like they're uh you know quick uh, i'm not doing it you know right after the other so the the layer below you know what i'm pouring on has hardened up and a lot of times um there's a bonding issue between resins you know it, resin doesn't just stick to everything it needs something to kind of grab onto it's a mechanical bond so if you have a, a hard cured plastic, there may be some, some bonding issues there. So that's going to be the second thing to kind of look at with these things is, uh, you know, is, are we getting any kind of chipping? Is it, does it blow up in my face? Um, stuff like that. Is anything cracking? So it'll be kind of fun to see how this goes. I don't really anticipate too many problems. Um, I think I am probably going to wear a face mask on this one just to make sure. Uh, I don't want this thing shrapnel in my eyes. Um, but I think it's going to go pretty good. Uh, and I don't really anticipate the, the air bubbles being an issue at all. Uh, I decided that I just don't want to have to worry about trying to get that thing into a pressure pot when it's just kind of, uh, I'm just trying to save some of the ex excess resin. I don't want to be worrying about that thing. I, I want to worry about the blanks that I'm making. That's all that I really care about. Frankly, I'd rather just throw the resin away, the excess, than uh, you know, potentially screw up the actual casting because I was trying to get this other thing in, the, in a pressure pot. The other thing is I don't want to waste another pressure pot with the Happy Fun Cup because I got other things to make. So, uh, you know, I, I think the air bubbles shouldn't be an issue. Worst case scenario, if, if the surface is kind of rough, I mean, you can just put a, a clear coat on top and then that'll kind of fix that. It may not hide um, little dimples or whatever that may be on the surface, but it should, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll clear up the, the, the bumpiness if there is any. I don't know if there's gonna be uh, a significant problem there. So anyway, last week we made some handle blanks and I got some results. Uh, make sure to check out the, uh, I did a, a YouTube short um, and I made, a brass mallet out of one of them. Um, this was the one that we, you know, this is the first pour that we did last week. And I was like, oh man, this is setting up on me really quick. And uh, I was a little worried that the blanks weren't going to turn out uh, good, uh, let's say. Um, but they turned out just fine. <clears throat> Hold on real quick. I need to get a drink. Okay, man, I have like allergies today and it's just making me messed up. <clears throat> anyway, so I made a mallet uh, and these are a simple kit. Um, stainless bottle stoppers makes them. All I did was I just drilled and tapped into the blank on this one. Um, I really didn't want to waste time, uh, you know, waiting for the, the insert to, you know, cure, you know, to glue it in and cure all that stuff. So I just drilled and tapped and went to work. And I think this thing would be fun. I mean, you know, for carving, I'm really not worried <laughs> that, that I didn't like put a, an insert in this thing. I mean, it's not, you shouldn't be smacking the heck out of it. You're, you're carving, you know, that's, that's the idea with this thing is kind of light taps, um, with some, some heft, but overall, I mean, these blanks turned out really wicked. So this was a three, uh, maybe four colors. We did, uh, I didn't really get much white in these. I don't think, I, I kind of forgot about the white. Um, was this the one? I don't know. Anyway, we got two colors of green and orange. And so I have two extras. If anybody wants to uh, pick up, these are the, the only other two left, um, but they're available on my website. If anybody wants to grab one of those, <clears throat> 
I decided not to uh, ship these with the um, with the what am I trying to say the subscription boxes because I wasn't sure how they were going to turn out um, if they were you know there was like any issues with them so I saved these two and thought I'll just do a project so there's a link to those if anybody wants them and the other thing is I have a couple of extras of these and they're actually up on the website now I would probably recommend waiting until we see how these things go <laughs> so I wanted to get them up there just in case somebody wanted to, to order one um, but it's kind of dependent if 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 the thing sh you know like shatters on me or it's just it turns out terrible then I'm going to be taking that listing down from my website and nobody's going to be getting any of these blanks. But I, like I said, I don't think there's going to be a problem. So let's see here. <clears throat> yeah, the tap handle, that would be pretty cool too. Uh, so we got Kim was here first and then Clyde, Mark's here. Jim's here. Old Man River. Sweet. So let's head over to the lathe and let's fire this thing up. I got it uh, set up on the lathe, so let's let's switch over to that camera. <clears throat> I already mounted the blank. So what I'm what I'm going to be doing uh, on this, and I, I didn't do a very good job, but I have it mounted using like the bottle stopper mandrel. And all I did was I just drilled a hole in the center and then tapped threads in um, the you know the three eight sixteen threads and then just mounted it to the bottle stopper blank for now. What I'm going to do is I want to get a, uh, you know, a, a, what do you call that? A spigot? <laughs> I always call it a spigot. Um, what do you call that? A mortise uh, in the bottom so that I can flip it and then, uh, you know, chuck it using the expansion mode. Um, I didn't do a particularly good job of getting this thing centered. So, I mean, it is super wobbly. I don't know what I did, but... So unfortunately, this is going to be a lot thinner than I, I wanted. Um, at this point, I don't really want to mess with trying to um, like redo it. So we're just going to battle through. I'm going to use the, the large, you know, like the full size cutter on this to just because it has more heft, you know, a much longer handle. This thing's going to be bumping, it's, it's bumping and grinding quite a bit right off the bat until I can get this thing trued up. So we're going to do that. I'm going to get my face mask out. Get this thing rolling, make sure the camera's good, yeah. Gotta turn my cell phone on. I'm gonna turn some air uh, dust collection on. And let's get started on this thing. switch my tool rest out. See how this goes.
but it's wobbly. It's getting trued up pretty quick here. Collector's not really getting anything, is it? All right, let's stop and see where we're at here. Ooh, that's looking pretty cool. I'm not feeling any issues right now. Um, we do have a little bit of glow in the dark down here. That's kind of cool. Uh, but that's going to be more um, abrasive. Got a little bit of glitter in the middle there. So it's looking pretty cool. Hey, Coral Marine, how's it going? All right, let's keep on going. So like I said, we've got this pretty well trued up down here. There's a little spot that's off. <clears throat> we just gotta keep kind of going. It's not as bad as I, as I thought. I'm not taking off that much material. Sure are making some shavings out of this thing. So I'm not really going to be doing a whole lot of crazy shaping or anything like that. I'm, I'm pretty much going to go for just kind of a flat, you know, flat look. Um, the main thing is we just need to drill out the center, hollow it out. And again, I'm not really going to put a lot of embellishment on it. I want to make sure that we get through this uh, and get, you know, the outside sanded. I'm probably not really going to sand the inside. Um, maybe just kind of get it you know, so that it's not bumpy in there. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna sand and polish the inside on the stream today because I wanna make sure that we get, you know, fairly well through this <clears throat> so you guys can kind of see what these things look like. Um, and frankly, the inside's not really that important, I don't think. I think the outside is the most important part of this project. So we'll get that looking nice.
tell you what I do need to do. <clears throat> this tool rest needs wax. I'm having trouble getting getting the tool to move, so it's time to wax this sucker. I just put a little paste wax on it. <clears throat> Let it dry for a minute. Hey, Michael, how's it going? What are you up to this weekend? All right, that ought to be good. And then just buff it off. And the tool should slide a lot nicer now. I just waxed the, the lathe bed as well. So everything's smooth and good. I think we got it trued up at this point. It's not wobbling all over the place. Well, I still have the tailstock support. I'm gonna come in and just kinda, cause this thing's pretty wobbly on the back, but I just want to kind of true it up a little bit just so the blank isn't wobbling so much because I need to take the tailstock support away. So far, so good. This thing's way wobbly. Oh no, now it's wobbling again. Why is it so wobbly? Hmm. Well, that's not good.
Alright. <laughs> I think what we're gonna have to do is just get this thing drilled and flip it. Because something changed. I don't know what's going on. It's, it's solid on the, the chuck, so I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so we're gonna go with the easy chuck. And we're gonna go with, let's see, I'm gonna check the, the diameter of my jaws. Uh, let's see, I've got, I've got all the jaw sets. I think, I think these will work just fine, the offsets. I think we'll be good with that. Doesn't really matter, I don't think which size we go with. Um, but I do want to make sure, I don't want to go all the way out to the edge, you know, so I want it to be in the inside. So what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> I'm going to get this thing, you know, down pretty far where there's maybe an eighth inch between the, the jaws. And just double check. I always forget what the dimensions are of these things. Uh, looks like one and a half. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to drill it out with a Forstner bit, with a one and a half inch Forstner bit, and make my life easy. <clears throat> and then just come in and uh, put the dovetail sides on. Where's my one and a half? Is that it? That's one and five eighths. That would work. Oh, here's my one and a half. So I'm just, just going to go with a, a Forstner bit to get that hole, and then I'm going to come in with the detailer, put a little bit of a dovetail action in there, and we'll be good. Oh, scoping out the farmer's market. Nice. That's cool. Iron Arrow Ranch. That's cool. Oh, nice. Purchased the property. Cool. Oh, thinking about retiring there too, huh? Cool. That's fun. So, oh, Southeast BC. Is that what you said? Oh, okay, that's cool. Iron Arrow Ranch. Nice. What's next to British Columbia? Is that, I, I don't know the, do you call them provinces? I always think of states. I'm such an American. <laughs> Is it Al Alberta? Next one over? I don't know. I'm not very good at that. Uh, all right, so we're going to slow this sucker down. A little bit further. Maybe as well use the dust collector, huh? Oh, I went a little far on that one. That's okay. I was getting so excited about this drilling operation. I just kept going. I just want to make sure that this end is nice and flat. <clears throat> where the where the chuck's gonna meet it. Well, actually the chuck's not gonna meet it. Never mind. Still.
come in and get that dovetail action going. I'm going to actually reverse the lathe so that I can just come in the other direction. So I don't have to contort myself too much. It's one of the nice features of having a reversible lathe. I think I'm at the wrong height here. Mm, pretty close. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. Alright, never mind. We can't do that. The chuck was coming off. That's what the problem was. So I'm just going to flip around to the other side of the lathe. I'm also going to get my little remote out. <clears throat> so let's back up a little bit. Oh, plugged in. Give you guys a little bit wider angle. So you can see what I'm doing actually. So I have a little remote control. My problem is, if something goes wrong, I gotta like reach over here to hit the stop button, so I don't love that. So luckily my lathe's got a, a little remote operation. I just switch it to the remote, and that way I have controls back here where I can start it, change the speed, and also I have a big button that I can slam if I get into trouble over here. So let's see if I can get in here. It's still kind of awkward. What would be nice is to move the whole thing down, but I don't really want to mess with that. I do want to put my face mask on again. I wasn't so worried about the drilling operation, but... is I'm hitting the, hitting the tool, so I got to come up a little higher. Got a little bit of a dovetail in there. That'll kind of help the connection with the chuck. Let's see what you guys are saying. Gage is here. What's up, man? Two hours from Alberta. That's cool. Awesome. You're even closer to us now. All right, so we got this thing ready to be chucked. I'm gonna get it off this, this sucker. I think that's been the cause of most of the problems. It usually works okay, but I don't know. I think it was kind of wobbling. <laughs> shoot I was thinking on the inside I didn't measure the outside dang it I haven't done something with a chuck for a long time uh, you got to measure twice and 
think once. All right, let's try this again. I might actually, do I have a smaller chuck? Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, this might work, let's see. Let me measure this one. I actually think this might work better anyway. Uh, nope, that's the same size. So we're looking at two inches on the outside of that. Dang it. <clears throat> All right, let's chuck this stupid thing back up. I am not a professional wood turner. <laughs> Find a two inch. Forstner bit if I have one, hopefully. Hmm. If I don't, you can just, you don't need a Forstner bit. It just makes things a lot easier, you know? A lot faster. I know I have one. I just don't know if it's actually, oh wait, actually, I think I do know where it is. There it is. <laughs> Two inch. There it is. All right. Let's try this again. What do you think? I know, man. Thanks for joining the fun today. All right. Let's see if this thing uh, will turn all right. Looks like we're probably on the same plane. Got everything going the way it was. So, let's uh, move the camera a little bit. Let's try this again, huh? Yeah. Saw that coming. down just a little bit more. See if we can get a better cut. Okay. Just to make sure, let's just, yeah, okay, now we're good. Let's double check that the chuck actually fits. <laughs> Flip it to the remote and come back in and put another, uh, put another, uh, what should I call it in there? face mask again. Jason's here. What's up, man? <laughs> You're not the only one? Yeah. Oh, I've done it a lot, uh, quite a few times myself. I haven't even used the chuck in a long time. For like a project like this, you know? A little bit rough in there. We can we can clean it up though. I'm a little fast. Slow her down a little bit. Okay. Now we're in business, guys. 
You know, I say, as long as you don't make a mistake that you can't recover from, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. And even if you can't recover, then just go make another blank. <laughs> it ain't the end of the world. Okay, let's get this sucker off of here, maybe. I can. Okay. Ah, oh, that thing's on there. Okay, so we're gonna have to get the... Jaws of life out. Just needed a little pop. Easy chuck, here we come. And I love this because you can get it all like kind of mounted up, you know? Just using this the quick jaw thing, I just I absolutely love this quick thing. That kind of gets it like so it's not flopping around on you. And then come in with the actual tool. So we're pretty well off balance because I don't know what just what happened off the bat. I trued it up and then took the tailstock support away and it was completely out of true, so... Whatever. We'll true it up again. I'm not that worried. I want to get it trued up because otherwise it's going to be flopping around all over the place and I don't like that idea. Uh, I'm going to switch back to the headstock side. Looking pretty good. I'm gonna give it a one more. I gotta be a little careful on this, but I'll probably stop and just double check the tightness after we get going again. These things tend to, I don't know, move a little bit, so it's always good to kind of double check and make sure this thing is tight so that it's, it doesn't start coming apart on you. So I'm gonna pull out the big dog again. That this thing went. This is the oh, the stupid face mask falls down on me. Um, the full size fin, uh, finisher worked pretty well. Sometimes I'm gonna kind of share a couple thoughts that I found. Um, Carl Jacobson always would pull out the mini, the uh, what's it called? The oh, I can't think of the name of this thing the number one hollower, which has the smallest cutter on it. And in some cases that can actually be a little bit easier on larger blanks. It makes it, to me, it's kind of backward logic, but the idea is you only, you're only taking a small amount of material off at once. And so sometimes this thing actually can work better on larger blanks, but in this case, this thing's more hefty and being so far out of balance, I think I'd rather go with a larger cutter. And a, and a heavier kind of handle, bigger handle. And it worked pretty good on the, on the first one. CA glue is not your friend? Let's see. Oh no. Oh. Yeah, I know, sometimes that CA glue can be such a pain. Okay, so let's uh, true this thing. Now, this is gonna be a pretty skinny cup here by the time I get done truing it up five times.
I think it's like further out of balance than it started. I don't know what's going on. colors are pretty wicked though. I really like all the, the kind of scalloping because I pour them sideways. That's kind of cool. You guys got a good shot of this? Let's get you guys like right above the action. Ooh. I'm gonna give this a tighten. Not too much. I don't wanna, you don't wanna crank it down. You just don't want it to be loose. I don't know if you guys can hear when I have the face mask down or not. Uh, yeah, this is one of the leftovers. I call it the Happy Fun Cup. Cause we just uh, make some happy fun colors out of it. So it's starting to get true. Starting to get there. Interesting choice of colors, I know. Um, this is all kinds of different colors. So I can actually, I mean, some of these we, we made on the, the live stream. Uh, but these are my uh, pink glow-in-the-dark blanks. This is my blurple. Uh, 
I don't know what that is. These are my tiger stripe blanks. This looks like black and silver, possibly. Obviously white. I was messing around with some uh, pastel colors around Easter time there. Lots of different things going on in here. What's this one? That looks like Yamagata red. Got some blue. This looks like a live stream one. So yeah, lots of different fun colors in here. So I got inspired to make kind of a little bit of an indentation foot on the bottom here. So we're going to keep uh, going with that theme. I think that's pretty decent on the outside. I don't think I really need to do a whole lot more. Um, I might just try to I'm probably gonna have to do a decent amount of sanding on this just to get things kind of smoothed out, but there we go. And I'm going to try and clean up this face a little bit before we start digging in. Uh, this is a really, so I want to stop real quick and I'm going to turn off the air conditioner or <laughs> the dust collector for a second. So I'm not, I feel like I'm yelling at you guys. Um, so these are, this is a really fun project if you want to kind of just do some simple hollowing. Um, it's, it's a good, it's a simple, you know, there's not a lot going on for like a larger than like pen or, you know, handle or something like that project. Um, and it's, you know, kind of useful. You can put some pencils or whatever you want to put in the jar, but um, it's a pretty fun, you know, hollowing um, project. Uh, it gets you in, you know, a little bit further than some other hollowing things. Um, but it, I don't think that it's particularly like, you know, it's a, it's pretty beginner. So it's, it's a good project if you want to kind of test the waters, let's say, of doing a little bit of, uh, you know, hollowing and all that kind of stuff. So just wanted to kind of say that I, I like these projects that are kind of, kind of fun, you know, not, not, not high stakes, <laughs> you 
<laughs> uh, to, to kind of get your feet wet with. Lily is here. How's it going? And Lucy too. Sweet. All right, let's turn this air dust collector. I keep calling it an air conditioner. I wish it was an air conditioner. All right. Oh, but I lost my center. Shoot, where'd that go? Uh... Huh. Center drill fell, fell on the ground. Oh, there it is. Gotta take care of the center drill. All right, so I'm actually going to take a little bit more off down here because I think I'm going to have to take some off here. I can see this thing's kind of bumpy and I don't know. I, I want to have a little bit more of a reveal. starting to kind of get it more it's more like flat taper okay so let's come back in on the, on the inside here let's speed it up just a little bit Drop my tool post down. Let's take away the tailstock. I don't know if you can hear me. Let's take away the tailstock and see how the thing is running now. All right, we didn't get that. I don't know what happened. 
that last time. It was weird. Huh. Um, I think actually before we even move on to the inside, I think I'm going to leave the tailstock support up and do a little bit of sanding to get it kind of close. So I like to sand bigger things with that uh, inertia sander. I just, it's so much easier. You don't have to sit there and hold it with your fingers and all that. This tailstock out of the way. They're not tailstock, uh, tool rest. So I think I'm gonna start with, uh, I'm gonna see what happens with 240. I think I'm going to need to go down to 180, but if I can start at 240, that'd be spectacular. So, and I, I don't even use the handle with this thing. <clears throat> I don't even know where it is. Let's see. Uh, huh. I don't even know where I put the handle because I frankly just don't use it. Um, it's got to be in one of these drawers. I'm going to show you the whole thing so you can kind of see what it is. There it is. Okay, so it's just basically a, a spinning bearing with a magnet in there, and so, but there's no power. Now, usually these things come on a handle. I find that I don't need that handle. I don't need to hold this thing. Uh, maybe if I was doing something really deep or like a bowl, Maybe I would want that, but I don't find that the handle is particularly useful. I find it just harder to control. So I just hold it with this thing. And all you do is the rotation of the blank plus the spin is what gives you the sanding motion. But you want to go faster when you're using one of these. You want to angle it a little bit. But what I like about this compared to... Um, like a power sander, which those work great too, but then you got to either have battery power or a cable and it's making all kinds of noise, which granted I have a dust collector going, so it's not like it's going to make that much difference, but um, I don't have to worry about the power um, or anything like that. I, you know, it provides its own power and it works. It sands exceptionally well. I've always gotten pretty good results. So if you haven't seen one of these or, you know, uh, if your fingers get tired of sanding stuff, especially on bigger... Now, I don't think I'd pull this out for, like, pens. I guess you maybe could, but um, for larger turnings, especially for, like, really big ones, I would highly recommend getting either something like this or, a, you know, use a drill and do the power sanding method. is working fine. Now these things don't do very well with like small indents, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit by hand in there in that corner.
But overall, I mean, this thing's sanded up to 240 for sure already. So it just seems to kind of even go faster. I don't know. Now, I do want to point out, there are some, uh, some little air bubbles going on. And this is something that I was pretty sure was going to happen. I don't think it's a big deal necessarily, but there are some. And, and it kind of just depends on, uh, you know, one thing that it's going to depend on is how late did you pour it in? You know, how, how, how early or late. So there are some little pinhole things here and there. Um, Again, I, whatever. Um, this is particularly bad right here on this edge. There's a lot of them. But you can fill those in with CA glue. I don't think I want to do that today because um, it, it just that process takes a little bit of time. I'm just going to polish this up. Frankly, like I said, this is utilitarian. It's fun. I'm not particularly worried. But if you did want to fill those, um, let's, uh, let's fill a small area. How about that? And so... Let's find that one ridge right here. So this is just CA glue. So all I would do is I'm gonna take some of this thick CA glue, cover it, cover those holes. Let's see if this'll, it's probably not gonna like get rid of it completely where, where you can't see the holes. I, I don't know if that's gonna happen or not, but you're definitely not gonna see like holes you know you're just going to kind of see that there was this little area that i just take a glove or something and just kind of trowel it into the holes and then where's my accelerator and then i hit hit it with accelerator and you're just going to want to do a couple of coats of this i don't know why i took the glove off um, another way that I, another thing that I do instead of like a glove is sometimes I'll grab like a dental pick and use that instead to kind of trowel it around. You got to watch out if you've applied um, the, yeah, see it sets up faster if you've just applied the accelerator, you know, on top of there. Um, but you basically you're just going to keep you know adding a little bit more until you've filled that in now you can turn it on and you know just go with like a medium or, or a thicker ca and and use your finger to try and travel it in while it's turning there's lots of different ways to do this uh, if you wanted to you could just go for like an epoxy finish on top of something like this and then you'd be like done <laughs> you know it would fill in most of those holes for you and then once you've you know once you've filled the holes so i'm going to hit it i'm going to hit this again you want to put light you know thin thin coats of this stuff on you don't want to blob a huge amount of it because what ends up happening is if you hit it with the accelerator the surface will cure but there's still uncured ca glue underneath <laughs> so that not so much fun if you go to turn it you know right away turn the lathe on let's get the camera out of the way here if i can get in there get you guys zoomed a little bit more so this was the area that we hit it with and then you know you can just turn on the i'm gonna hit the dust collector here Yeah, black CA could work, but the thing is, then it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. 
then you're gonna have little black dots all over the place, which I don't know. It depends on what you're going for, you know. One thing that I kind of forgot to tell you also is you really want to make sure that you're not getting sanding dust in there first. You want to make sure these holes are cleaned out as good as possible, then put the CA on, which frankly I, I actually should have cleared that off with denatured alcohol first. Um, that can help pick out any dust. But then, you know, if you get dust in there and then hit it with CA glue, then you're going to have little white dots. And again, that's not usually very attractive. So in some cases, it may be better to just leave it, you know, don't do anything. Um, because otherwise you're gonna probably have some work to do trying to kind of fill these things. I want to try and get this thing down and just going to do a little spot sanding here with this thing. You can even take this thing out. This is what I really like. Take it out and this is a pretty easy way to, you know, rather than trying to hold a little thin piece of sandpaper, you can just use this thing. You probably even make a little grip or something uh, that, that this is just a quarter inch stud. So what I'm trying to do is get all the CA off that surface. I don't want any, you know, I just want to, I want those holes filled. And that's it. Now I didn't get those ones up there, obviously, or there might have been some sanding dust that I trapped. But I think that I got rid of the rest of this line pretty well and that's really what I was kind of focusing on mostly yeah so I mean that that pretty much covered it up if you get these things filled I mean it'll it'll probably cover it up and all you're re really gonna see uh, is the, the color behind it, you know? So it depends on what you want to do. The thing is, you're probably going to have to go all or nothing, is, is kind of what I'm saying. Um, it's, it's really best to fill everything and get it all nice and, you know, filled up. So uh, you're, it's going to take some time to fill, you know, every single hole. And it really may not really be necessary, um, depending on what you want in the end. All right, I, I'm going to switch up to the 400 grit real quick. And then, and all I do, this, this is just the, the Abernet stuff. Oop. It's just Abernet. I'm actually going to get a new piece and I'll show you how I do this. So I buy it in the rolls. I buy rolls of it. And so what I'm going to do is I just stick this on top of here. Uh, you can also just buy pre-made discs of sandpaper and that makes things pretty easy. I 
I'm not certain that they have Abernet specifically uh, in little discs, in the little two inch discs. So I basically have, and you could probably even just leave it square if you wanted, but I usually come in and just cut off the corners. And that's good enough, you know, that's fine. Let me just pop it in, go to town. And actually, I do want to, I do want to wipe it off with some denatured alcohol real quick. Just to make sure that we got all the 240 grit sanding particles off. Okay. I think that should be good. <clears throat> so it's looking pretty good, I think. Looking pretty good. And like I said, I mean, yeah, I know that there's these little dimples here and all that, but to me, it's not really that big of a deal. I don't know. And if you didn't really know that they were there, I don't know that they would stick out so much. All right, so let's drill this sucker out. I'm gonna put you guys on this side. I'm gonna plug the camera in too. So now we're at the fun part, and usually this doesn't take that long. If your blank's not so out of round, and you don't screw up the, the first drilling operation. Uh, it usually isn't that bad, you know? Okay, so, uh, same thing. I think we're gonna go with a two inch Forstner bit to start. You could go for like even bigger, but I do want to taper it a little bit, and because I had to take so much material off, there's only you know so much down there. So we're probably going to go for kind of a skinny bottom. Uh, let's see, I'm, what am I looking for? And I'm not going to go too deep because I, I, I cut pretty deep in for this uh, mortise in there. So I can probably just measure with the short ruler here. I'm going to give myself like half an inch for that, uh, actually, I'm going to stay three quarters of an inch away from the bottom. All right, so basically I just want to be going around to this area. We got about four inches or so to work with, maybe even a little less, three and, three and seven eighths. Uh, to work with from this e from this edge right here. Yeah, it does kind of look like the storms on Jupiter. I should have done one big red. Could have been the eye. 
<laughs> so, oh, I know what the other thing was. I want to see what the diameter of this thing is at this point. So I'm going to get my little doohickeys out, measure it. So we're looking at diameter of around three inches. So that's that should be perfect. I'm, it'll probably be a pretty thick. I'm gonna leave the walls pretty thick too, just to ensure that we have we have a good time with this thing, basically. So we're starting at two. I might have an inch or so that, to play with, you know. But I can kind of do whatever I want on the inside. Alright, so let's slow this down. Get my face mask out again, just in case. I don't think there's going to be a problem here. Gonna double check, it's vibrating a little bit, so I wanna make sure that we're nice and tight. Blocking your view completely. Look at these crazy shavings. <laughs> So what did Michael say? Sanding the inside. If sanding the inside of a turning, I find that leaving the sandpaper square helps prevent any dig-ins on the curves. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Look at these crazy shavings. Wow.
probably save some of these. The only problem is I find that a lot of times they look cool as shavings and you put, put them in clear resin and they, they're all the color's gone. But, all right, so I just want to measure this and see where we're at. So we got about, Three and three quarters. So I'm just going to go to this this mark, the, the knurling on the on the chuck. That ought to be good enough. Yeah, I don't, like I said, I, I don't know if, uh, how well they would actually dunk. I, I've never really gotten particularly amazing results reusing shavings. Uh, it works good if you put a ton of dye in it and it's like super dark. Like some of these are pretty dark, so I think they might work, but you got to kind of watch out with some of the, the colors. Uh, they just tend to disappear in the in the resin And actually, uh, part, I think actually part of that issue is I'm usually making pen blanks. And so that's, that's the other half of that problem, is you're, you're dunking something that ends up being somewhat translucent or transparent. And then, again, we, we make a tiny thin pen blank. You know, by the time you're done turning it, there's no material left, and so you don't really see it. So I think that's part of the, the problem I've had. They oftentimes are not particularly amazing pen blanks. Lost that one. Okay, I think we're good. Let's see how deep we are here. Let's do a little measurement. Uh, we're, we could go a little deeper, actually. Yeah, we could go a little further. So let's just go in a little bit more on the chuck. good enough. We don't need to tempt fate today. <clears throat> All right, now it's time to pull out the the number one hollower. This thing's amazing for hollowing. Put a, a, car, a negative rate carbide on there and you're going to love it. Let's get that right there. Yeah, maybe bottle stoppers.
Oh, uh, that's cool, Mark. Yeah, I think you're gonna have fun. I think you're gonna have fun turning those. He's making some closed end pens uh, using the, the Artemis kit. I don't have that one that I turned. Um, Kid Cooper actually asked about it, wanted it, so um, it's in his collection now, but I turned one of the Artemis blanks a while ago and it was pretty fun. All right, I'm gonna switch over to the remote side so that I got my controls down by me. Get things arranged here a little bit. What time is it? 30. We're doing okay. to take a time out and get all these shavings out of the inside of my shirt. <laughs> That's fun. I also need to move the tail stock out of the way completely, I think. So let's get this kind of situated sort of right there. I might actually, let's see what happens if we drop it down. see the screen there we go so you might be able to kind of see what's going on a little bit I'm gonna go with one click up there we go this thing plugged back in all right I'll be right back here Okay. Tail stock out of the way. Now I can get right up against the, the lathe here. Put my controls right there. Now, once again, it's it's pretty fun to be able to, to just slide your headstock down. If you got a full-size lathe and, and everything can move like that, Makes it a lot easier to turn at the end of it, which I'm going to quit talking about it and we're going to do it. Oh, kicking the, kicking the tripod. It's not like it's really difficult. Where's the thingy? Oh, the dust collector's sucking me in. Get out of my way. There we go. I haven't moved this thing in a long time, though. I'll tell you that right now. Let's see if it'll move. <laughs> it's not wanting to move. There we go. I don't move it usually. All kinds of stuff. All right. Now we are ready. What do you guys think? Yeah, the shavings do have to be pretty big. 
Yeah, people have done it. I'm not saying you can't. It's just I have never really gotten awesome results. I've done it a few times and I'm like, yeah, that wasn't really worth it. <laughs> you know? So I don't tend to really do that much. There's just so many things that are way better that... I don't find it worth my time. But we'll give it a shot. We'll see if we can do something with it. All right, let's get the, I gotta get the dust collector fixed again. All right, I gotta get you guys just out of the way for a second. Whoa, whoa. Tripod malfunctions. <clears throat> really wish there was an easier, I, I would actually just say a lighter, way to get this dust collector stand to work. That would be fabulous. So let's get that there. Get you guys up. What did I do? <laughs> You're back. <laughs> uh, don't worry, guys. Everything's okay. <laughs> oh. <sighs> okay. Now we are ready. Oh, I'm on the remote. got the we're going about 900 rpms right here and that's that's a pretty decent speed i could maybe go a little faster but the thing is you know a lot of times i'll say you know you want to go as fast as possible but realistically there is a a cutting um like a feed speed in a sense and so if you're getting just like um if you're not getting like ribbons you know, those are like nice little ribbons, right? You speed the thing up like way too fast, a lot of times it just pulverizes it. Oh, that's still looking good. We may not be able to get it going fast enough, but a lot of times on the outside, like you're not even getting ribbons, it's just like a dust is coming off the tool. That's too fast. You can probably slow it down and you'll probably get a better cut, you know?
you can get in there pretty deep with this tool. Here's where, like they say, the maximum hangover is. I probably went farther than that, but I don't know. It's not even gonna bottom out. So I, I've got the full length of this tool on something like this, no problem. Episode 250, huh? That's pretty cool. Yeah, nice short in intermission. Should have had some technical difficulty elevator music. Oh, got a little chatter there. Shattered a little bit. Might have kind of twisted the tool. Actually, that's because of the amount of hangover I've got. <clears throat> That's why, you know, you kind of have a, a limit to how far you can get the tool because what happens is you're going to get more chatter the deeper you go. So I'm going to try to take lighter cuts when I'm deeper. What's up, dude? We're hollowing a fun cup. There's that shattering. I was going pretty hard on it. Maybe even slow down the speed a little bit and see if that helps. Or speed it up. One of the two. See what's see what's going on in there. Stop it. Take a peek. We'll, we'll get some light in there. Let's see if you guys can get in there too. Let's see here. Check that up. Trash can out of the way. 
then zoom it. Uh, I gotta go down a little further. I'm not sure how well you can see in there, but. Reasonably well. Let's get the tool rest out of the way. How about that? What do you guys think of that? This thing's going to be pretty cool. Looks like a tumbler, kind of. What just happened? Task in progress, what the heck? What is happening here? Good lord. Cameras breaking all over the place. Hopefully it'll come back for you guys in a second. much overhang once you start getting like three inches of overhang it, it just it's just starting to vibrate a lot so I just got to be kind of careful and put the tool on the tool rest the right way that always helps <clears throat> see how get the tool rest a little closer maybe that'll help me out too all right so let's get you guys positioned a little bit better again. Uh, this might work. Let's see. That's not a bad view. I do have to move this light though because it's like right in my face. Yeah, that's not too bad. What do you guys think of that? I can even see. to take off a bunch of material. It just gets it just gets to the point where it starts vibrating. That's the problem. Just gotta go careful. Because I'm 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 at the bottom right now. And if I'm careful about it it doesn't want to chatter so much you know but one false move and it starts barking at me <laughs> task and brought yeah I'm trying to turn turn this stupid thing on I don't know what that was I don't think I've ever seen that before. I'm finding out new, uh... Yeah, YouTubers censoring it. Yeah, that's funny. Good old YouTube. So I think what I'm gonna do is kind of taper the inside. I want the, uh... The only thing I don't like about this, uh, the, the remote, you know, now I have like the remote controls on the end here. This box. 
you, you either get this or you get the headstock, right? But the problem is you can't use the headstock controls to turn it on and off if you're on the, you know, remote thing. So I'm always like, you know, I want the controls on the end of the lathe so that I have, you know, the emergency stop right at, at hand, but, um, but then I go over and like, I'm just talking and I turn it back on, but my, my controls don't work on the headstock. It's always weird. Uh, but anyway, what I was going to say is I want to, I want to get this, you know, kind of thin at the top and I'll probably just kind of leave it since I'm getting chattering and all this stuff going on. I don't really care how wide, you know, the diameter is on the bottom. This is kind of a fun piece. I'm not that worried about all the design details. Just want a thing to stick some pencils in. this weekend Peter you working on anything cool I saw that uh, the blacklight project with Jake's blank that was so cool I don't think I could do that I got to see what I'm doing camera things in my way and I gotta, I gotta move this. I gotta be able to see down in there and see what we're doing here. thing that I actually want to do is I want to get uh, a little bit of a, an angle I like to kind of make a little angle on the rim on these types of things
let's see, what's Peter Brown up to? Working in the dark is scary, I know. Oh yeah, I saw the strobe light. Yeah, I don't think I can handle that either. I can barely watch the video on my couch. Oh man, that's funny. Got back from Michigan, that's cool. Uh, no, actually, the, the bigger the diameter, the more a kind of aggressive it is because it's taking a bigger chunk. So it's actually better to hollow with something small. At least in my limited experience. <clears throat> bigger ones, plus it just it takes up, it's, it's kind of a clunkier thing. So this one's usually a pretty good pretty good at hollowing. But I, I kind of like that, I don't know, that like chunky but like curved look, you know? I don't know. We're just having fun with this. I just like to have a little bit of fun. chunky but it, it doesn't appear so chunky up getting in like a trance with the, when you're doing hollowing it's just slow movements in and out that's looking pretty good actually um, I do want to take off a little bit more but like I said I'm kind of going for the, the chunk look so mainly I just need to kind of smooth out the smooth things out a little bit in there I think it's looking kind of how I wanted it in my head, which is odd, to be honest. I'm gonna get some light down in there, get this cool rust out of the way. Drop you guys back just a little bit further, maybe you can kind of see down in there. Sorry, I've got like 50 controls that I gotta mess with. There we go, that's pretty good. So it's just a little bit kind of kind of bumpy in there. Um, once I get past this, so I, I, I want to take this down still. I want to come in further on the top to about probably where this red is. Get that thinned out and then start kind of tapering it down. I'm probably not going to mess around with this bottom part too much because it's gonna take forever and I want to get this thing kind of polished up and you know I want to see what this thing looks like on the stream so looking pretty good no complaints from me
All right, so let's get you guys back there. That's a pretty good location, I think. <clears throat> well, I always try to start it on the headstock, but that's not where the controls are. you this dust collector upgrade it costs so much money but I love it it really helps out See what's happening. Jake's here too. What's up, man? Everybody's joining the fun today. You guys saw Happy Fun Cup in the title and we're like, I gotta see what that is. I know, I know. Clickbait. It's all clickbait, guys. Alright, I still got some work to do here. Like, right again, right in that red. Right there, there's like a step.
because the, the thinner that you go, the more chattery the resin gets too. So that's another reason why I'm probably going to leave it a little bit thick. That's getting pretty good though. Almost there. Try Mark's theory with a big tool. Let's see how this does. Marginally, I'd say it's marginally better, but once we get to the bottom, it's just not. The other issue is the bottom part of this blank has uh, has glow in the dark powder in it, so that might also be kind of causing it to shatter a little bit more. But it's pretty smoothed out now. I'm just gonna give it a couple more. A couple more of those passes. The sanding part is kind of tough. I don't have any brilliant ideas on how to sand this thing. So I'm just going to go with a little bit of 240 grit, cut it off by hand. 
And like I said, I'm really not going to go for sanding the inside of this thing because to get this thing sanded up properly would take quite a while. So I'm just going to go with a little bit of hand sanding. Slow it down a little bit more. That's the wrong thing. Higher than 240. Because <clears throat> the surface is pretty pretty gnarly in there. So let's try 180. 120 would probably go quicker, but let's see what we can do with 180. We lost the dust collector. Did it overheat? What's happening? Huh. That's not good. Hold on, guys. I gotta check the breaker. Hmm. I think we tripped the circuit breaker. Ugh. Oh, Michael's out. Have a good one, man. Thanks for joining the fun. Let's see if my dust collector will turn back on. That's weird. I don't think it likes just running for hours on end. I lost my sandpaper now. Too. Oh, I see what happened. <clears throat> Okay, the, what happened was the thing closed and dust collectors don't work that well if the thing is closed, you know? <laughs> the blast gate. Still lost my sandpaper, I don't know where that went. Okay. I'm gonna get me some new sandpaper and we're gonna try this once again. Actually, it might have shut after it turned off. I don't know. <clears throat> Here we go.
favorite time of year, sanding time. I think I actually need to take the tool to the rim here, because it's just kind of, it's got like a pretty big groove. And I'm gonna sit here and sand this thing to death if I don't pull the tool out. Save me some time. Alright, now I'm going to skip up to the 240, slow this down, get this out of the way. that out <clears throat> so we can save a little bit of time. I think that did it. I might go for, I don't know, 
know, I might even go for like a Yorkshire grit type thing on the inside just to kind of, it's not going to be perfect because you still got to, to get all the scratches and get it all perfectly polished up, you still got to buff it, but that stuff will at least get it kind of shiny. Wipe that off with some denatured alcohol real quick. Ooh, that's looking pretty good. Wow. Now, there are some areas that are like transparent that if I really sanded and polished all this, I guess it's just this one big area right here. Um, it'd be pretty much see-through. Uh, so, like I said, I don't want to spend the time polishing the inside to, to a super high level. So I'm just going to go sand up to 400 here. And then... Uh, <clears throat> probably not advisable but I'm just gonna hit it with some Yorkshire grit see what that does and then be happy with it kind of thing you know uh, on the inside and then we'll, we'll get the outside nice and polished up the other way you can go is you can just sand it up to like a thousand and go for kind of a non glossy look maybe we could do that actually Side is much harder to sand. Oh, I lost my sandpaper. <laughs> it's the only problem with that dust collector. It tends to suck up my sandpapers. That was a giant chunk of it, too. I gotta watch myself. Is the camera off? Dang it. You guys are like, what are you doing even? Let me zoom out. Sorry about that. Thanks for letting me know. Hey, what's up, Ken? How's it going? I'm just sanding anyway. It's kind of boring. All right, so that's going to be all the sanding I'm going to do. Now, again, it's not exactly advisable to just use Yorkshire grit after 400. That's not, that's not the way to do it, but it will impart some kind of, you know, a little bit of grit and some grease, <laughs> some oils. And, so we're just gonna give it a shot, see if it'll do anything. I just wanna get it reasonable. I don't care if it's perfect. That's not what I'm shooting for on the inside. So let me wipe this off uh, with the denatured alcohol. On the inside. Got that nice 
and clean. And we'll try some Yorkshire grit. entirely certain what you're supposed to sand up to before you start using Yorkshire grit, but I'm pretty sure 400 is pretty low. I'm going to be going to like a thousand or something. Maybe 600. But we're going to just see what this does, you know? Try and get it kind of polished. looks like after the Yorkshire, Yorkshire regular. Oh yeah, that's fine. I mean, really, I don't even see the point in spending more time putting the micro on. Again, like, this is like a utilitarian type of thing here. I mean, even in pictures, nobody's going to be like, oh... You didn't use the, the microphone, <laughs> you know? I think that looks fine. Let's try and get some more light down here. I mean, that's looking pretty darn good, I think. Yeah, we'll give it a spin. I mean, frankly, why don't we, let's do that on the outside. Whatever, you know. Oh yeah, I guess I don't really need dust collection for uh, Yorkshire grit. Where's my, let me turn this thing off. I'm like yelling at you guys. It looks pretty good. Okay, so. Let's try this Yorkshire grit a little bit. I, to be honest, I really like buffing. Um, I think that to get a flawless finish, you have to go through all the steps for buffing. But I don't know. I'm kind of thinking if all you need to do is just kind of polish it up, Yorkshire grit might... If I'm not going for like it has to be absolutely perfect, I might just 400 grit, Yorkshire grit, move on. You know, maybe a microfine on the outside. What do you guys think? True grit. I'm sure it's all probably kind of the same thing. <laughs> There's lots of pace out there now. Oh, from 240 to 1,000? Really? Uh, we're making a pencil jar, Ken. That's that's what we're happening. That's what's happening in it today. I've used it. Um, I compared. Like I said, it depends. I'm very I'm very picky. 
Um, and I've been kind of vocal. The, the problem is it doesn't solve problems for like pens and, and most of the things that I make. I think it's hands down, Yorkshire Grid is hands down the best thing to put on a, like a wood bowl, you know? Like it's great on wood. Um, it's great for hybrids because it imparts, you know, the oils and stuff. My problem is if you put Yorkshire Grit on something that's just resin and <clears throat> I don't know, in the past, like what ha if you can't get it, get all the scratches out, if you're going for flawless and you put a product like this on with oils and stuff on it, um, sometimes you just need to kind of like spray lacquer on top that might end up being the, the, what you end up having to do with, with some of these I haven't done that in a long time but basically if you put oils and waxes on you're not going to be able to spray finish anything so that's one of the reasons I don't I stay away from things like this um, <clears throat> for most things but for me I don't know it, it depends on what's going on but I, I usually get better results just sanding doing my normal kind of sanding wet sanding and then buff and to add paste in the middle doesn't really change anything because you don't really get rid of it doesn't take the place of much you know of, of what i was already doing so i think it would take the place of a couple grits of wet sanding maybe i don't know maybe i just don't use it right you know <laughs> that's, that's the other thing like I'm, I'm not saying that i know what i'm talking about it's just personal preference but if we can sand to like 400 and just slap some of this stuff on, let's let's try it. I'm happy with it. I don't really want to have to buff it after you know like th that. That's what I want. I want something fast that saves me time and is easy. But if you got to buff it anyway, that's where I'm like I don't know. Let's see if we can just cheat. I want I want a cheat product, you know? Let's see if it'll let me cheat today. Okay, let me get my glasses on. Whoa! It's flinging it all over the place. Let's see if we can do a little bit of cheating today. I like to cheat. Yeah, I know the pencils aren't going to care. <laughs> but I do want it to look okay, you know? Decent. It doesn't have to be perfect, though. That's definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of. Yeah. You'll. You'll want to. You need to watch out a little bit if you're using. If you're wet sanding wood that has not been stabilized, it will absorb water. Or choya or any of those types of things. Um, <clears throat> But, so you don't have to wet sand, that's, that's the thing. So, you know, like, I wouldn't necessarily recommend, I don't think that there's a whole lot of advantage to stabilizing choya. Um, but I don't think that I would recommend wet sanding it either. So just go with, uh, you know, and that, that would be a, this would be a good product for, for using on, on something like that, you know. That'll take the place of the wet sanding steps for you. Um, and it's not going to, you know, the, the wood, it'll, it, the wood will probably benefit from it, honestly, because it's got the waxes and oils in it. However, if you're going to put a CA finish on top, then do not use this, <laughs> you know, that's, then that's where you're going to run into problems. So it, it just kind of depends. I mean, realistically, I, you should be able to just dry sand up to 400 and then put a CA finish on top. That's what I do with stuff, something like that. But if you do put something that's got waxes and oils in it, then just make sure that you, you get as much of it off of the surface as possible because finishes don't tend to stick to waxes and oils. Yeah, I've, I've stabilized Choya and it, I mean, it just, I don't think that there's any way to get it like super bright with the colors and just stabilizing it. I think that's a waste of time because it's just not necessary. I don't think it's providing a whole lot of benefit for like the stability of the material or anything like that. Um, 
and it's not making it look any different really so yeah dyes I it, it'll take on some color but um, a little bit off balance again not sure why Yeah, that's looking pretty pretty darn good. Oh yeah, there are a lot of little micro pits in this. I you're probably best off putting a finish on top of these blanks. I would say. Probably going to be your best bet. All right, let's try this uh the micro Macro fun. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I don't think that it really got the scratches out, though. All right, let's try some micro fine, guys. I don't even think I've used this one yet. Let's, let's see. Let's see what we got. Micro, microfine. Okay, so here's the microfine. All right, let's give it a whirl. See what we get here with this micro fine paste. Let me get the rim a little bit. How about that? On the inside. Thanks, Lucy. Uh, this, just to let you know, these are just all leftover pours, you know, from blanks that I make or things that we've done on the stream. It's just an extra cup, and I just dump the any any remaining, you know, if I have leftovers in my pour cups, uh, just gets dumped into this thing. And I've got a couple more. So, you know, two of the things, there was two things that I was looking at. Um, Obviously, I wanted to just see what this blank looked like turned, but um, I had two, you know, we, we had a couple things that we were going to specifically be looking at with these blanks uh, because I've never turned one of those, uh, you know, I call them the fun cups. Um, I've never turned one before. And so there, there was two issues. Um, one, I don't pressurize these things. And so I wanted to see, I knew that there was going to be air bubbles, you know, in it. Um, but how big of a deal was that going to be, you know, and I didn't really think it was going to cause any problems turning it, but you never know, you know, so that was number one. I wanted to see, you know, what's the deal with the air bubbles? How is that affecting everything? And second, uh, because we're just basically pouring, you know, uh, resin on top of cured resin, that usually doesn't, that's not the greatest thing in the world. Um, you want to, you want to be generally, you know, resins don't chemically bond. Um, they, it's a mechanical bond, which means, you know, it needs something to grab onto. And if you got a super smooth surface, like, you know, you pour resin and then try to pour more resin on top after it's fully cured, if that surface is super smooth, it's not going to be a very good bond. Um, and it could crack or it could, you know, come apart or whatever. And so that was the other thing that we wanted to, like, kind of see because of the nature of that pour, I mean, it could take me a month to fill one of these with a bunch of different pours. So the the resin was generally, except for maybe a few layers that where I did a you know a few few things in a day, um, the layers would have been cured, and I'm pouring more on top of it. So overall, 
Um, you know, yeah, there are some micro air bubbles in here. Um, you can see them. I, frankly, I mean, uh, unless you're really getting close, there's a bunch of scratches too, because we just went from 400 grit to Yorkshire grit. Um, so the surface isn't perfect on this thing anyway. Um, but there's a few little micro, you know, there's, there's quite a few. I mean, you can see all these little pits. Let's see if you guys can kind of see light out of the way. I don't know if I can get it close enough at the right angle for you guys to see the surface. Um, kind of need to, the, the thing is you can't really see it unless you get in like the glare of, of the light. You know, like a raking light kind of thing. So let's see if we can kind of, there we go. That should show you the surface. So we're looking at a raking light kind of a reflection and there's there's some little micro pits all over the place on this I mean but there's also a bunch of scratches too so I don't think it's any worse than like kind of a not so awesome sanding job you know and it's going to be mostly prevalent in the darks purples blacks I can't see almost anything in the whites. The clear kind of reflects a little bit. So, you know, there's there's some air bubbles, but and there's there's it's going to definitely be bubbly in the middle of this clear spot. There's little little air bubbles. But what are we going for? You know, that's that's the thing. Is this is just a kind of a fun little project. So, I don't really care about the surface or any of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, if if you needed a, a flawless blank, this is not the way to do it. Yeah, this is not a good blank to do uh, if, you, if you need to make a flawless project. But for something simple and fun, these things are great. Um, and then the other thing is the, the integrity, like the, the bonding and all that stuff. I mean, there's no problem because we were putting a lot of stress on this thing. It was way out of uh, round at first. If anything was coming apart, it would have came apart probably right away, especially when we're you know getting chatter on the inside hollowing. So I don't think there's any problems. Um, I'm fairly happy with this micro or, you know, whatever the, the Yorkshire grit stuff. Um, I think if I couldn't see all these scratches, you know, things would be a little bit better. So like you probably want to go up to like 600 or 1,000. Um, that's probably going to give you a better surface. But I think at that point you could probably get away with this and be done. If you're going for super glossy, you're going to have to buff, you know. But this is fine. This is a nice finish. So let's see here. Four point four by four point five by six point five. Um well you might have to make your own out of HDPE, you know. Yeah, the air bubbles actually might help a little bit because it's not a smooth, dead smooth surface. So that was that is one thing. Um, each layer is going to have, you know, something a little bit something to grab onto. So <laughs> that is kind of an interesting thing. So I, I, at this point, I'm done. Um, so I think let's let's pop this guy off. I'm not going to worry about the the base of this thing either. I don't really don't really care that much about that. Um, I might. You know, just give it a little bit of a quick kind of sanding, but get that out of the chuck. We're all. So, you know, we got we got a little bit of it's not perfect at all on the base either. Um this is a little bit kind of sharp and jagged, so I, I definitely do want to run some sandpaper over it, but I don't really care about the base like that being like that. But overall, man, that's pretty sweet look at all these crazy colors that's fun and then these ones are going to glow in the dark the pinks those are glow in the dark we got a little bit of the so just for everybody you know like a lot of these colors and stuff like these are blanks pen blanks that i that i make um the blurple uh, i don't know about that one but that one is and then some of these I think we actually did on the live stream, like this one possibly. And um, I don't know, probably that one actually, the red. Maybe this one too. 
so there's it's kind of an interesting blank where there's there's different things going on with uh, and actually these were um, pastel colors that I was messing around with I think during Easter time so it's pretty cool um, but let's see let's let's put some pencils in our pencil pot what do you guys think maybe pens pens and pencils I'm gonna have to go and get some pencils now do some pens here let's see how many pens and pencils this will hold it's not too bad I mean for not really hollowing it out too much either I was pretty pretty uh, conservative <laughs> with how much material I was taking off to save some time and all that Go get another. I got another pencil. Don't worry. Boom! Look at that. Pretty sweet. Oh yeah, Connie has fun skulls. That's right. Okay, sorry. I'm I'm reading the the comments. Oh yeah, cool pendant light. That's that's true. Oh, I got Yorkshire grit on my. Got some grease on the. It freshly waxed this too, and it's all greasy now. That's okay. It's better than sticky. Hopefully, it won't get sticky. So let's head over to the over to the main viewing area so I have a couple more oh, I have a couple more um, things are just getting crazy today let's go down here oh god my mouse just fell off the whoo we're having technical problems and it's getting nuts around here okay so here's the pencil pot in the overhead view not too shabby like I said, it's not super glossy, but I don't really care. I'm just going for something that's going to hold some pencils, and that's all that I want. Um, but I do have a couple more uh, blanks available, and they're, they're on my website already. So if anybody wants to turn one of these, like I said, so, you know, full disclaimer, you know that there's, you know, some air bubbles. I don't pressurize these. These are all leftovers. But if you wanted to do something kind of fun... We got some pretty crazy colors going on in both of these guys. Now, I still will say, you know, be careful turning these because, again, um, I turned one and it was fine, but, you know, wear your, your proper safety protection and all that kind of stuff. Just make sure that everything's good to go on this um, because it's not, you know, my normal way of doing things. Um, but both of these have some pretty crazy colors in them. So there's number one and two you just pick with the drop down and they're pretty cheap um, because I wasn't going for I just wanted to share something cool with people so um, I think they're like 20 bucks you know 20 bucks each you can have some fun with it if you want let's get a link to those guys there's also the handle blanks um, available as well and there's links down in the description of this video all that good stuff so for anybody that kind of is just joining us I, I posted a short um, I turned a handle out of one of the blanks that we we cast first that were I, it was starting to set up on me and I'm like I don't know so I wanted to turn something so I made a little carver's mallet <clears throat> and I, I posted a short that has you know turning this thing um, but I got a couple of those blanks uh, available as well so these are the same same blanks um, as that handle so all that good stuff is available on the website guys there's a, a link let's see there's a link to the fun cups Here's another link to the, I need to add the link to the handle blanks, I think. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I had fun turning that thing up. There was some challenges, but I mean, overall, once I, once I drilled the right size hole, everything went pretty well. <laughs> so I was pretty excited and I'm really happy about this. I'm, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna take this home. Uh, we just moved into a new house. We actually have a, an office room quote unquote and I think Gretchen might enjoy seeing this as something that she can put some pencils and pens in so it should be pretty cool uh, let's see here
started pressure on the... I'm not sure what you're talking about, Ken. Put on the shelf. Oh, pe pressure on pen, maybe? I'm not sure. So anyway, guys, uh, we'll probably be back next week doing some resin stuff, I'm guessing. Um, I have, I'm not entirely certain what we're going to do next week, but I think I, I want to get back into some resin stuff. I do have a product on the way. I'm, I'm not usually, like, companies constantly... Uh, or like, oh, you do resin stuff, so we're just going to, you know, do you want to <laughs> random resin casting, you know, stuff. I usually don't even respond or, or say, you know, no thanks. Um, but there's a product that somebody's going to, a company's sending me that I want to kind of play with on the stream. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to get to that next week or, because um, I think it's actually being, like, I think I might already have it. I think it got delivered today. So there's some random thing. Now, it's not going to be really more, it's not going to be like, I don't think, turning blank focused. It's going to be more kind of like the crafty kind of resin stuff. Um, that's, I think, where you would really want to use this product. But I, I was just intrigued. I wanted to try it out. So I'm like, yeah, send me, you know, a free one so that I can kind of play with it. And I think they're actually sending, if this thing actually works okay, I think they're going to give one away. Or I, I don't know. I, I can give the one that they send me away too. Um, so we should have some fun with, uh, you know, random products and stuff like that. So it should be kind of cool. I don't usually do that. Like I said, I don't... A lot of times, like, these products are, are not the type of casting stuff that I really do. And I'm like, I don't... There's no point in sending this. Um, let's see here. Yeah, you've seen some of the colors, yeah. I know, uh, some of these, uh, many of these, I mean, honestly, there's there's a lot of pores... Uh, that are from the the streams in these um, but there's also quite a few um you know like i'm um, like this one's definitely got a lot of my pen blanks and and some of these actually have a lot of pen blanks i i've got probably like 10 pen blanks that i'm going to be dropping soon uh like brand new uh pen blank designs and so a lot of these are actually testing colors so it'll be it's kind of interesting to see um <laughs> some of the stuff that I'm kind of playing around with in the shop that's that's top secret, let's say. Oh, oh yeah, I pressurize it. Yeah, and that's the thing is, you know, if, if you want to do this and, and get the best results then and, and have time and all that stuff, um, just pressurize it with, you know, whatever you're casting each time. My problem is I don't want to worry about those things. Um, I'm focused on whatever I'm actually casting, you know, and I want that to be good. I have enough trouble remembering to pressurize the pre pressure pot. So trying to remember to put the happy fun cup in and, and a lot of times there's not even room. I just, I'm like, I'm not messing with this. There's going to be air bubbles in these things. So yeah, mix of pen blank and super chat. That's true. Yep. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Like I said, all these blanks and all these things are on the on the website if you want to go check those out, if anyone's interested. And then we'll be back next week. Um, and we're going to continue the noon um, start time. It just it makes more sense. Um, it's it, it allows me to start cooler um, in the shop, you know, being in the summer. And so I, I think it's a better idea. Um, I mean, it's already, you know, like last week, stuff was setting up on me before I before I knew it and we started kind of early so if I was starting at two o'clock I mean it'd just be like miserable in here so um, so we're going to be back noon next week um, and then it should be pretty good anyway um, but I can't wait to show Gretchen I think she's going to love this thing it'll be a good addition to the new house and anyway guys I hope you enjoyed the stream today I hope you have a great time get in the shop do something stay cool as well uh, if you're especially if you're in a really hot zone um and I'll see you guys all next week. We'll do some resin casting. So have a good night, and I'll see you on the next stream, guys.